afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Valley Spotlight Extreme Home Edition. Here we are at the Case House, just sitting, relaxing, and hoping that Santa is getting ready to make his way down this chimney in a few more nights and uh, bring some presents to us if we've been good this year for Christmas. Now, I told you last week we had that elf, mischievous elf, that was in the quarantine box. Well, guess what? He's out of the quarantine box. He got out a couple of days ago, so apparently he's feeling good, he's healthy, and Icy the Elf is wreaking havoc. This is where we found him this morning, in a toilet paper roll. We cleaned up some of it, the rest of this was all over the kitchen floor. So, Icy, I didn't touch him. You're not allowed to touch the elf, I know, I know the rules. So, anyways, hopefully you're having just as much fun as we are getting ready for this Christmas season, getting ready to send out your Christmas cards, baking Christmas cookies, planning your meals, and get ready to go to church and figuring out how to do all of this with the coronavirus and COVID-19. But anyways, I think we have a pretty fun show for you uh, this week. I visited a couple of places. First, I went to a really cool boutique uh, in Boardman. I'll tell you about it later. It's called Gray Boutique, and we'll meet the lady behind it and hear her story. And also, I had this bright idea that Everybody's wearing these masks now, and why are people breaking out? So we went to the experts at Advanced Skin Spa to find out and also figure out what we could do in case we're having those blemishes on our skin. But a special Valley shout out, Valley Spotlight shout out to the gang that is in charge of Toys for Tots in the area. I talked to my friend Ken Jakobek, who um, kind of helps run the show, and he has volunteers from all over the place that help. Now the first part, they have 29 people, 27 people from the Marine Corps League, uh, a Gold Star mom in there that used to be a letter carrier. Anyway, these people set up the boxes around town and they put up the posters so people know about Toys for Tots. And then of course they do the pickup as well. And then they take all the toys to a warehouse where they have to count them out. Now, at last check, we had over 16,000 toys and they had another $29,000 that they were gonna work with. Last year, they uh, gave toys to almost 8,000 kids, and this year it might be even bigger and better. And they use all sorts of people, VFWs, American Legions, Sam's Wedge Inn, Quaker Steak and Lube, and all those great people chip in to help out. If I forgot anybody, God bless you, you guys are doing a great job, and a special Valley Spotlight salute to you folks. All right. For now, though, we'll send it over to Lauren and find out what she did this week and uh, find out what's going on with the rest of today's program. Lauren, Merry Christmas, and over to you. Well, Michael, it's a wonderful cause, and we are so glad to see such an overwhelming amount of support for such wonderful people. I have a few gifts um, to wrap myself. So, uh, hey, by the by, remember last week and you wore that amazing sweater? I thought to myself, since we're not going anywhere, I better bust out my holiday best, so... I'll take your light up sweater and I will match you one of these with all the sequins on it. And the reason is, is because we're taking you to all these great boutiques all over the area this week. And I know you got to visit one. I'm taking a look at Coral Rose. So we have so much to get to. And of course, our good friend Mark Canzanetta a few years ago, he did the unthinkable. He did Christmas cookies with, I don't even know how many children. And I know Mike, yours were there too. So we'll take a look back on a holiday season that was a little bit easier, a little bit more simple. As we all know, our local restaurants, they have, um, they've, had a, they've had a tough go, and we're very, very fortunate to have Steel Light International as part of a big sponsor of this show. And they are one of those people who, you know, they are so ingrained into what they do, and they have their the pulse as to what's gonna happen within the, the restaurant industry. And just a couple of days ago, I had the chance to sit down with John Miles and find out what the next plan of attack will be and how they plan on getting through the rest of the season. Well, here on Valley Spotlight, you know we have had the opportunity to share so many different restaurants with you over the years, and especially during 2020, when times have been so tumultuous and so different and so interestingly odd. John Miles, the CEO and our good friend here on Valley Spotlight has made this possible. So from our Valley Spotlight family to the Steel Light family, we're very thankful for you. We Thanks really very are. much, Lauren. It's always great to see you. It's always good to see you too. And you know, this has been a 
tremendously odd year for you guys and for restaurants all over the world. And you've had to basically be a sounding board for so many of them. How are things looking right now? And what are you most thankful for as we look back over this crazy year? Well, I mean, first I would say that we're, we're most thankful in that you know, as a large employer, your, your first concern, and I know your first concern with your team is safety, yep. safety of your team. And so, you know, we've got through the year with, you know, a very, very minimal number of cases, none of them severe. That's good. And, you know, the measures that we took both statutory and voluntarily to ensure the safety of our employees has been really effective. And so I think that, you know, as a is a CEO of a business. That's the first thing. Yeah. You know, the second thing is, you know, our end users and how uh, hurt is the only word that I can can really use. How hurt they've been. And if you think about restaurants, uh, hotels, um, coffee shops, all those all those places, you know, they're really centers for the community. They are. You know, that's where we all gather, whether it's for the morning coffee or it's for a drink in the evening or if it's for our kids' birthdays or whatever it is. And, you know, it's really been devastating, you know, across the board for, for the hospitality industry. And it's been very difficult, um, very difficult to watch, very difficult to go through. Um, you know, I think that December through the first quarter um, is not going to be an easy time in the hospitality industry. You know, as vaccine distribution um, revs up, you know, I think that there, there will be an end to this, and I think people will get back to a new normal at some point in time, uh, you know, probably second quarter. But, you know, I think we're in for a, a tough few months, and I think that you know that um, those end user operators are not only customers for us, you know, they're my friends. Right. They're your friends. <laughs> it's and uh, it's, it's a hard thing. It's a, really, really hard thing. When you are surrounding yourself with people and like-mindedness and you're trying to get through something that we've never been through before, what words of advice? Because I have a feeling not only do they apply to this industry, but they kind of apply to life in general. And that is the greatest part about sometimes being your friend and having all these great, wonderful minds together that are so creative. Yeah, I, I would say that, that you know, you can't lose sight of trying to do the right thing, um, even in a really difficult time. And, and I think for all of us, you know, when you're tangled up in a pandemic and, and you know, you're trying to run a business and deal with really the unknown every day, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's easy to get lost in all the difficulty that's going on. You know, in the end, you know, my advice to any business owner or whatever industry is, you know, you've got to be able to reflect on what the right things are to do. And, you know, the right things to do tend to be the right things to do for people. Right. You know, if you take really good care of your customers, you take really good care of your employees and really good care of your distributors and really good care of your partners, mm -hmm. you know, I think that in, in the end, you know, a lot of things take care of themselves longer term. It's really um, difficult when you're in the middle of it, yep. you know, to kind of see that clearly. But, but, you know, I've always tried to take a step back and really think about what are the right things to do for the stakeholders in the business and the organization and the stakeholders' broader customers. And, you know, I think that that's led to good decisions. Um, and you know, in a and, really, in and a really hard time. too. You guys have taken, you know, sometimes like we have a lull, but you guys have still been able to create such different things and they've all happened basically this year. Yeah, well that's the other thing that I think, um, you know, you really have to think about. Um, just because the pandemic has occurred doesn't mean that the world is not moving on. Right, and you guys have proven that. And, you know, so thinking about new products, if you're a restaurant, like so many of my friends have taken this slow, difficult period to redevelop menus and redevelop uh, entrees or appetizers and think about new exciting things to offer customers. And I think that, listen, if there's not a future, um, there's nothing to do right now. Um, so I think that you always have to think about, you know, the future future, you know, after the pandemic and what it looks like. And you have to be uh, prepared for that. You have to be doing new and innovative things. And, you know, you've got to continue to invest in yourself and your business. And I know that you've done that as well. 
we we have, and some days are, are harder than others to get out of bed and say we've got this, you know. Absolutely. And that is, I think, uh, the testament to our Valley Spotlight team um, and the people that have supported us. So, on behalf of all of us and the entire restaurant and hospitality industry, we wish you guys the best of luck and a very merry holiday season, the best it can be, right? Yeah, happy holidays to you, Lauren, and your whole team. And I've had the opportunity to be on Valley Spotlight a few times this year. And for all those great customers and our employees and everyone who's watched, uh, happy holidays to you and your families and be safe. Thank we'll, you. We'll do, a, we'll do a, an elbow. There we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> And that is what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to look forward to the beginning stages of 2021. A big happy holidays and Merry Christmas to everybody at Steel Light, including John. And we appreciate him making this show possible on some of the darkest days for everybody. Of course, we always know a dose of good stuff is a dose of good stuff. And that's why Mike Case is standing by with a look at what we did a couple of years ago at Beastar 1907. Mike, my goodness, so many kids, so much frosting. You put them all together, what do you get? And speaking of restaurants that continue to push through, let's go down to Bistro 1907 in downtown Youngstown for another episode of Pesto's Test Kitchen. I'm not big on the cutout cookies, but when the kids come to decorate, it's the best. And we might have a visit from the jolly old elf himself. Twas a show before Christmas, and on this very station, kids are decorating cookies because they're on vacation. And we need stuff for them to do on vacation, we don't do we, Mark We do. It? They just started Thanksgiving vacation, and they're having a good time getting ready for the holidays and That's Santa right. Claus to come. Mark is here. His pastry chef, Amanda House, too, is here. How are you, Amanda? Good. How are you? And your little boy is here. His name is Jack. Jack. All right. Jack. Let's, <laughs> let's introduce the kids before we start. All right. Uh, Cage is right there. Raise your hand, Cage. All right. Good. That's Ben. <laughs> Natalia, raise your hand. Mario, raise your hand. Gabe, Thomas, Thomas. Bentley, Sophia, Carter, and Avery, right? Yep. Did I get that right? Good, good work. All right. Adriana and Isabella as well. I forgot about you guys. Sorry. Because they're the grown ups. They're helping. I know. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's talk about Christmas cookies and how much fun it is to get everybody together during the holidays and do something like that. I think this. it's one of the oldest family traditions that there is. Mm -hmm. Decorating kids Christmas cookies with your family and the kids getting them involved, making it interactive for them, getting them excited for Santa to come. You know, and I'm, I'm blessed to have Amanda here as my pastry chef. So we're going to talk to Amanda a little bit on how she made these cookies, how she made the frosting. And it looks like her son is really going to have some issues with that shirt after <laughs> no, the show. No, that's how you do it. You just put the, put the frosting right in your mouth. There you go. Skip like the middle man. Cookies and just eat the frosting. Are cutout cookies difficult? They're not. No, they just take some time. So the fro the cookie that we made, that I made, um, it's a creaming method. So you cream the butter and the sugar together till it's light and fluffy. You add your egg one at a time until it's incorporated, and then you sift in a separate bowl the flour, the baking powder for making you know the cookies rise, and salt, and you add that to the egg flour mix or the egg butter mix. Do I have that in slowly or can I just dump it in? Again? Slowly incorporate the flour into the um, egg and um, butter mix. How come? What's the difference? Because if you dump it all in, it's not going, it's kind of just going to sit there. You kind of have to slowly incorporate it. Okay, yeah, because that has to incorporate with the flour and all those yeah, things. Want, okay. The, the butter and the sugar to incorporate well with the flour so then you get a nice rise on your cookies. Okay. And once you do it and you cut out the cookies, there's the scraps, right? Yes. Yeah. So I would say I don't roll out my cookies more than three times because okay. you roll it, you get your cutouts, and then you roll it again. After oh, three times, I say roll them into balls or just okay, bake them off so that you can try the dough. Because okay. after that, you work the flour too much, too many gluten, and then it's not it's not the kind so of texture you want. So gluten's a protein that gets really tough if okay. you ever work it. Okay. Yes. Uh, once I put it in the oven, first let me ask you about the oven. Are okay. people's ovens really the temperature that it says on I mean, the back of the oven? We all hope they are. I just have. We both have new kitchens, so right. we're both really hoping that our oven is like the way it's supposed to be. I Check. You get an oven um, thermometer, the one that dangles in the in the bottom. You can either put it on the shelf in there, or you can hang it from the wires, and then you can calibrate your oven that way. Okay. It's a good way to know, even for the holidays, for your turkey, you know, for Christmas, because then you know your oven's where it needs to be. Okay. A lot of people peek in the oven no, to see no. how they're doing. No put peeking. the light on. Put the light on and like watch it through the window, but don't keep opening and closing because then you're fluctuating the temperature, and then your cookies will come out differently. Okay. And when we take them out of the oven, you have some tips for that too, right? Yeah. When you take them out of the oven, the sugar cookies, leave them on the on the um, 
the, the cookie sheet. The cookie sheet, okay. yeah, thank you. Leave them on the cookie sheet for about two or three minutes, so then that way they sit and they overcook just a little bit. That way, when you take the spatula to them, they don't just fall apart on the um, cooling rack. All right, you guys keep going. We'll take our little break. When we, we come are. back, we have a bit of a surprise. We do have a little bit of a surprise. We have a special guest. Uh huh. And then we're going to talk about how to pack up these cookies and make sure they're good, whether you send them somewhere for the next week or even months down the road. Be right back. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. I'm constantly asked by news sources how to best navigate today's real estate market. I call the brightest agents in the business to get their input. Hi Kelly, what's going on in the Mahoney Valley area? Hi Barbara, the market in the Mahoney Valley has remained strong. I'm so happy to hear that. Sellers are enjoying the safety of the Guaranteed Sold program and buyers and sellers love the 3D tour and the free moving truck. Get the best advice from my friend Kelly Warren. Go to kellysoldit.com. Be safe and smart. No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Only A to Z.com. Heels is the low cost living anti inflation department store. Shop Hills in the Liberty, Lincoln Dolls, and Morgan Plaza, Youngstown, and the Richview Plaza in Warren, and the Hills location in Champion, all open 10 till 10 daily. All right, we're back with our creative minds making our Christmas cookies. Everybody hold up their favorite one, their best cookie. And let's get a look at those. I'll tell you what, Mike, I think they did nice. a great job. I think they're wonderful. Did everybody have fun making the cookies? You guys did yeah. a good job. Tips on packing them up, Amanda. Go ahead. Uh, airtight container. Tupperware is the best. If you're going to stack them, you know, you make them a couple weeks before Christmas. If you're going to stack them, wax paper, let them dry out a little bit um, on the counter. Air dry a little bit, the frosting. Wax paper, stack them. Put them in the freezer if it's going to be more than a month. And then I wouldn't keep them in the freezer over like four months. After that, probably say goodbye to them. Very good. Well, we have a special guest, a surprise guest for the kids. Is it okay if we bring him in? Is that all right? Yeah. All right, hey. well, let's see him. It's not him, but <laughs> it's another one. Let me see if he's back Who's here. out here? Come on over. Here he comes. Oh, looky here, you guys. Isn't this fun? How is everybody? Everybody good? Are you guys making cookies? Are you making them for Santa so he can get bigger? <laughs> You know, Mrs. Claus told me I gotta lose some weight. <laughs> Not till the 26th. Not till the 26th. Right. If you, I know you have like a sixth sense about these things. If you look around, have most of these kids been pretty good? As far as I know, early, early on, you've been good, and I'm sure you're gonna be good the rest of the year too, right? Yeah, don't blow it, you guys. Is everybody uh -huh. raise your hand if you've been good? Raise your hand if you're not quite sure. He's got his hand short. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a present for him? You know what? I have something for each and every one of you. Oh, that is so you nice. Know what? It's really nice when you make those cookies and you leave them out at your house. Those heavy ones. Guess where they're going? <laughs> right there. Right here. What's your favorite cookie, Santa? Yeah, do you have a favorite? Oh, honestly, sugar cookies are my favorite. All right. There you All go. Right. Milk sugar for cookies. Santa, and uh, Rudolph likes carrots. Right? <laughs> Is that right? Make them see better at night. There you go. <laughs> How's that? All right, Mark, you ready to wrap this up? I think we're ready to wrap it up. I just want to say thank you for all the kids making this such a wonderful day. And thanks for all the moms and dads behind us that yes. got up early and brought the kids over. That is so great. Anything you have to say, older kids? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Very good. How about you? Happy holidays. All right, very good. Take care. Don't right, forget everybody. to join it right here in downtown Youngstown, Bistro 1907. Special appearance from Natalia and Mario in that one. And uh, Santa really did bring them presents. It was pretty cool. My favorites are the uh, peanut blossoms. If you're asking my favorite cookie, you know, the peanut butter ones with the Hershey Kiss on top. You know, in case you're making them. I'd be okay with it. All right, when we come back, more of Valley Spotlight Extreme Home Christmas Edition. We'll have more for you after the break. And it really all started with salt, with Himalayan sea salt. That's where it all started because of a patient who came in and told me about the benefits of salt therapy, which is inhaling uh, Himalayan sea salt, an aerosolized Himalayan sea salt. And I found that my patients were having fantastic results using salt therapy. And I wanted to know how could I incorporate the Himalayan sea salt into products that would benefit the sinuses and the skin. And that's where Salt Me was born. All 
Welcome back to Valley Spotlight Extreme Home Edition as we get ready for the holidays here in lovely Talmadge, Ohio, where the snow finally fell again and then melted again. But anyway, that's okay. Uh, I had this bright idea. I was thinking a lot of people had um, problems with their skin because of your mask that you have to wear during COVID. Well, leave it to COVID to come up with a brand new word for all of us. It's called mask knee. So I went to Advanced Skin Spa to talk to the experts about what it is, why it happens, and what we need to do about it. We're seeing a ton of mask knee. We're seeing mask, mask knee on clients that have never even had acne or any skin issues before. It's very common right now. That's right, it's called mask knee acne that you get because you're wearing a mask. And since there's so many people wearing masks all day, every day, there are many problems with our skin. I've seen a major increase um, with clients coming in with a lot of breakouts, especially where the mask hits, so like along the jawline, along the nose here. If someone currently has acne, the acne can get worse. If you have rosacea, the rosacea can get worse. And from friction from the masks, people are getting a dermatitis irritation. So people who've never had any skin issues are starting to get um, dermatitis, which is a concern. To understand why this is happening, you have to understand what's going on with your skin. So you have to remember when you have a mask, it's enclosing that moist heat from your breath. Okay, and there's a lot of bacteria. There's a lot of good and bad bacteria. And what happens the to the skin? Hold in moisture, and they almost produce like a little sauna. I mean, we're we're holding in moisture. There's a lot of humidity, and along with the nitrogen and the carbon dioxide, we're breathing out 3,000 different compounds. Some good, some bad, and they're staying on our skin and congesting our pores. A lot of it has to do with the type of mask that we're wearing. Different kinds cause different issues. I've seen a lot of nurses and doctors come in because they have to wear the N95s and their skin's very raw too. So they have rawness, redness, and a lot of acne. So what do we do? Well, let's start with the obvious first. Anytime you could take the mask off when you're not around people, let your skin breathe, maybe clean the area with a cleansing wipe before you put it back on, that would help tremendously. The facial wipes might be the answer for a lot of us. Something I recommend to our clients is to carry a facial cleansing wipe, something gentle. If you're wearing a mask all day, give your skin a quick cleanse to make sure you're getting off all the toxins. Second, if you wear makeup, dial it back a little, especially the foundation. Everything that you have on your face, that's going to penetrate into the skin and it's just going to continue to irritate and break you out. And with the disposable masks, throw them out and start fresh every day. The cloth ones? Well, they need to end up in the laundry. Cloth masks are really great because you can wash them as long as you're washing them with like a sensitive um, hypoallergenic laundry detergent and you can rewear them and they have a tendency to be a little bit more comfortable. With the mask that you're wearing, if it is a cloth mask, you want to make sure that you're washing it every single day, okay? Like in the sink? In the washing machine. So you want to get a gentle detergent and you just want to put, put it in your wash. Either way, Mandy and Jennifer say the skin needs some help and there are products that can provide relief. We have our Skin Beauty Repair um, Recovery Oil from Eminence, which is great for someone who has that dermatitis irritation. It's gonna help calm the skin down because it's very healing. So if you wear the N95s, it's gonna be healing and hydrating, but it also has tea tree oil in it as well. So it's gonna be antibacterial. So any of that bacteria that's on your skin, it's gonna help eliminate that. My number one recommendation is using a gentle cleanser. Of course, we have the best ones out of Van Skin Spa. Anything that you use from the store is better than nothing, but you're gonna get a better quality product when you come to the spa to get it. So I would recommend either a gentle cleanser if you're raw and irritated, or maybe a salicylic-based cleanser if you're dealing with acne. And at Advanced Skin Spa, they specialize in treatments that can help. If you're having issues where you need some decongesting, you're breaking out, our hydrofacial or the dermal infusion would be good for that. If you're having some sensitive skin issues such as rosacea or the dermatitis, we have oxygen, which is really good, calming and healing. So it just depends on what type of skin conditions you're having. So as the virus numbers keep rising, it doesn't appear that our mask knee problems are going away anytime soon. I think as long as we have this virus and we have to wear a mask, we're gonna see issues with this. Um, I think that it could help if everyone 
practice good skincare habits and they came in for their facial treatments, it could eliminate some of it. The skin's never going to get used to it, but we just need to be more savvy in how we're handling the mask situation and make sure that we're following directions, not reusing our disposable masks, washing our masks in gentle cleans cleansers and detergents, and um, using proper skincare products. Yeah. How great are they over there? Now, Advanced Skin Spa, if you don't know where it is, it's in that shopping plaza in Poland, you know, by the bank. When you pull into Poland, it's on the right-hand side. It's almost the last one down on the end on the left. And if you'd like to buy those uh, things, you don't even have to go to the store if you don't want to. Uh, you can go to their website, advancedskinspa.com. Or if you do, they have a little boutique in there too, which is kind of cool to shop with. And you can get gift cards and all sorts of great things. They are really really good. All right, Lauren, let's send it over to you and see what you have. Such a beautiful spa out there, I have to say. I've been there a couple of times, so Merry Christmas to Jen and the whole wonderful group of ladies out there. We wish you the very best in 2021. A few years ago, I had the chance to catch up with um, the great team over at the Coral Rose Boutique in the Eastwood Mall. And nothing has changed except for the fact that everything changes there and you never know what you're going to find. If you've never been there, here's a look at what you can expect when you walk in the store. We see the headlines almost daily. Big name retailers pulling out of shopping malls all over the country. These malls become like ghost towns. But that is not the case at Eastwood Mall. This mall, like many others, is opening its doors to independent local business owners who are changing the conventional shopping trip for the better. Gracie Lane offers eclectic, hard-to-find gift items. This is their flagship store, and now they officially have six retail locations. Everything Buckeyes continues to thrive, and Quick Fix has been in business for 38 years fixing watches and jewelry. And now they've added to their offerings, incorporating everything you would need to embrace the world of essential oils. And now ladies looking for those must-have fashion items no longer have to travel elsewhere to find something special. I think what's really nice is when you go to the larger cities and or you go to Chagrin Falls in Cleveland, right? You go down into Columbus, you go to New York City, you see a lot of boutiques, a lot of those little specialty stores, those nooks and crannies that everybody loves, kind of brings out the fashionista in you. Everybody has an individual style. They all do have a fashionista, so some of them like that casual look, somebody like a business casual, somebody like to dress up. And it hits every age, so it's timeless, any age. You come in, you're younger, you're older, there's something for you. I think the big miss in our area was we didn't have anything like that. So putting this boutique in the mall has given the customers here something that they've wanted, that they've had to travel far to get to, but now they can come local and be able to get a taste of that. Ann Garris has shopped at the Eastwood Mall for years, but this trip was different thanks to retailers like Coral Rose. Well, I like that it's, you can be an individual. So many of the, the, the chain stores, anywhere you go, you're gonna find what you're wearing on somebody else. Where the nice little boutique places here, you can find exactly what you want that fits your style. And when you go out, you know nobody else is gonna look like you, which is a lot of fun. And you can still come to the mall and be able to shop for your kids and shop for your parents and anyone else that's on your list and still get something fun for you. So as you shop this holiday season, look around your mall and take a moment to notice the businesses who are making it their business to cater to their customer directly. I think they love the, the service that they get. You get a lot of special individualized attention here. Our girls get to know who the people are. They get to know people by name. They get to know their style. We take a lot of feedback in. So the per product that we purchase really comes from a lot of the feedback of what people are saying, this is what I'd like to have, or can you get this for me? So we've done a lot of ordering and future product coming in that accommodates the customers who are in our door. And if you follow them on Facebook or Instagram and you see something you like, just call for store pickup. They'll do that for you. Stay with us. We have more Valley Spotlight coming up right after this. View the best cafe, home of Uncle Nick's Greek fried chicken. Sunrise Inn, home of award-winning pizza. West and Maine. Come check out our poutine. Mocha House Cafe and Eatery. The famous California cheesecake. Charbonnet's Wine on the River, famous for our great wine and our charcuterie. Jack Steakhouse, famous for our cowboy ribeye. Modern Methods, famous for our craft beer. Cheers to Downtown Warren.
We are back here on Extreme Home Edition Valley Spotlight. We want to thank everybody, everybody for joining us on a Sunday football day between 4 and 5 o'clock. We do it every week, so thank you very much. Uh, if you're looking for those last-minute shopping ideas, whether you want to go into the store itself or if you just want to do it online or maybe you'd like to set up an appointment and just keep it to yourself. Everybody's trying to stay as separate as they can. They do all that at Gray Boutique in Boardman. And I wanted to take you there and share the story of the owner who's come a long way. I love it. I love it so much <laughs> or I would not be doing it. Amy Abrazeri is doing exactly what she was born to do. And I've actually been in retail my whole life, actually. I went to school for fashion merchandising. I have a degree in that. Ever since she started working, Amy was a rising star in the clothing industry, and she had her eye on something a little more personal. Entrepreneurship kind of is in my blood, so my father is an entrepreneur. He's had his own business for 40 years. Um, so watching all of his hard work and just seeing how proud he was of that work, I, I feel like I've always wanted to do something on my own. She worked for L Brands, the company that owns Bath & Body Works and Victoria's Secret, for 17 years, and then started her own business. And it was something I would do after my day job. So I'd do it at night, I would do it on the weekends. And I did that for about seven months leading up to actually opening the brick and mortar. The name is Gray Boutique. And there's a reason it's called gray. My leader in every review always said I was successful in my role because I lived in the gray, meaning that I don't treat every individual so black and white. I kind of treat them as an individual based on their strengths and developmental areas. Mm -hmm. So I wanted, when I knew I was going to open a boutique, I wanted to be something, name something that was very unique and different and meaningful to me. So that's why it's called gray. Something else that's meaningful? Offering products you can't find anywhere else. I really pride myself on ensuring that our vendors are not the same vendors that you're going to find at another local boutique. I think it's really, really important, um, not just for the customer, but also for the other small businesses. But we always are trying to give the community something different to make us stand out because, again, there's so many great uh, places you can shop locally, so we just want to give them something different. Not just different, but unique. Amy's own clothing line is called Lila & Louie and gray has its own scent as well. Mm -hmm. And we partnered with Avent Gardens in Poland, so it's manufactured there. And there's a body scrub, a body butter, a roller bar, um, and it was something just different to, to us. Just like everyone else, this year has been a challenge, but a learning process as well. It's been, it's been a tough year, but it's been a year of um, great learnings for sure. So um, always expect the unexpected is something I really, really have learned. Like who would have thought we would have closed our doors. But thinking back, building that online presence and that um, social media presence prior to opening really, really helped us out when we, when we had to actually close our physical doors. And Amy says there's still a place for an actual store. Online can be an option, but there are still people that like to get out and shop. You know, it's 50-50. There are still people who really want to see the product, try on the product, touch, feel the product. So um, we do offer private shopping for those individuals who do not feel safe going out, especially right now with the pandemic. So we offer special hours. They just have to contact us. Um, and we have local pickup um, as well, but I, I really am seeing it's 50-50. Meanwhile, don't rule out more gray boutiques in the future with the same personal touch just not right now. Um, what we learned is that we still have a lot of growing to do here in the community. I cannot believe how many people come in daily and say they did not know we were here. So I think just to really grow our presence on social media and to continue the online um, forum is what we're gonna stick to for now. Well, yeah, keep an eye out, but for right now, they're just gonna stay in one spot. That spot is located on 224 in Boardman. If you know those plazas, there's the one with the Burger King in the front and Creekside Fitness in the back. That's one, then there's a road, and on the other side is the one with Susie's Dogs and Drafts and Hothead Burritos. It's in that side in between those two. So check them out, G-R-E-Y, Gray Boutique, uh, right there in Boardman on 224. All right, Lauren, let's send it over to you.
Well, Mike, we promised on this show that we would take people to some of the greatest boutiques, and we have done that, so thank you so much. Okay, stage left, right over there. You can't see her right now. Her name is Molly. She's a seven-year-old beagle. She makes a mess everywhere she goes, including on the carpet, which is why Jamie from Boss Ladies Cleaning Service has the 411 on how to get some of those stains out of the carpet. And believe you me, I'm listening. Well, this week with our boss lady on helpful hints and hacks in the house, we have Jamie in my house and Molly, who has uh, plopped down right in front of us. What do you think, Jane? <laughs> I like it. Welcome to my basement. Thank you. Welcome to Molly's bathroom. Oh, no, Molly. I mean, from time to time, she does have <laughs> mistakes and she's seven years old, so you would think that she was housebroken. But especially moving into a new place, you know, you can see um, if you're, <laughs> you don't have to be a detective to see that there are already stains on this carpet, which kills me and Fred because you smell it and it's gross and like we're in a new house and like, what the heck? Right. How do we get rid of them? There's quite a few products and steps that you can use to get rid of them and to get rid of odors. Right. So um, an important thing with urine and things like that is to break down the enzymes. And so there's actually cleaners that have the enzyme formula. And so it helps control the old odor and it helps control like the stains. And in any of your um, carpet, you have the padding underneath. Right, so that so soaks in. You have it on the carpet and you can get, maybe you've gotten the stain off the carpet, but it's down in the padding and you can smell it mm -hmm. still. And so these products help with that. And this kind of helps just, uh, day-to-day -day vacuuming. You let it sit for 15 minutes and then you vacuum it up. Just kind of a maintenance. But I like to use this one for getting the stains out. Okay. And so if it's a new stain, if it's an old stain, it doesn't matter. You can do it either way. And this one is a disinfectant for the fabric and the air. So it actually disinfects any of the bacteria and germs and things like that. We've got a couple other places upstairs because I'm always the person <laughs> when I walk into the room and if I, you know, I've been doing the vinegar, I've been doing the hydrogen peroxide, I've been doing the mix with the baking soda and I have to say like, it's not working. Like it's just not working and I don't know if she's got some special kind of wee wee but <laughs> it's uh, it's just, it's terrifying. No, it's, it's tricky and these products, I've used them in my own house because I have two cats. Right and um, in clients' houses with a lot of success. And so, and another trick is for me, like you wanna spray it down, you wanna let it soak, you know, get anything up that's loose, and then make sure you keep your pets away from it while you're working on it. You don't want them around it, because they are chemicals. And then once you actually spray it down, soak it, scrub it up the best you can, I always have a trick of putting some towels down mm -hmm. and then something heavy on top of it and what's it gonna do? It's gonna so pull it up and out of the carpet. It's great advice, Jamie. I know you guys are super busy and staying safe and yes. keeping people's homes clean and healthy and that's all we can ask for. Now, if only this one could just learn how to not go wee wee in the house, <laughs> I would be one happy mama. But give them the phone number um, to how to reach you and your team. Yeah. You guys are licensed, bonded, insured, very, very, you know, very safe, which yeah. we love. Yeah, you can call us at 330 507-3630 or you can find us on Google or on Facebook. There's a lot of ways to reach out. Boss Ladies Cleaning, they're the boss. Molly, I know you think you're the boss, but she's <laughs> not. <laughs> and a big thank you to Jamie. The greatest gift you can give me is not having to smell all that mess when you walk through a room. So I'm very, very grateful. Stay with us. We'll have more Valley Spotlight right after this short break. Salt Me is a company that produces products that are made out of Himalayan sea salt. I have a love affair with Himalayan sea salt. And as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, the most important thing for me is that the products are gonna be effective and that they're gonna be safe for patients. So I make products that help sinus conditions and I make products that are going to be good for the skin and good for the body. And all of them are made of Himalayan sea salt. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight, enjoying ourselves days before Christmas, waiting for Santa to come. Oh, let's hope he, I've been as good as I could be. I hope he comes 
this year. All right, it's time for our home advantage segment, and we took a trip out to New Middletown slash Poland slash Evans Lake to see a really cool house and talk about buying versus building. Let's see how it goes with Kelly Warren. Hey there, time for another edition of Home Advantage with Kelly Warren from Kelly Warren and Associates. Thank you so much during this holiday season, hanging out with us. Thank you, I have nowhere else I'd rather be. Than this gorgeous house. Right. We're gonna talk about the, normally we don't profile a house, but this place is so cool. I wanna tell you about it in a little bit. But first, this was one that the couple built themselves. Yes, custom built. So let's talk about building versus buying one that's already, you know, already on the market. What, um, uh, pros and cons to building a house. Let's start right there. Well, you get what you want, so definitely a pro. You can pick what's important to you, what characteristics in a home you're really looking for, and mm -hmm. build exactly that. Money-wise, does it make sense? It makes sense uh, if you're going to live in it for more than a few years. You know, just like a new car, you drive it off the lot, maybe it doesn't make sense to sell it tomorrow, but yeah. over long term it does. How about some of the cons, things that um, aren't so great if you're building a house? It always takes time. <laughs> often more time than you think to right. get it built. Right. And it always takes more money than you originally estimated. You know, the builder says this is gonna be how much it is, and then you're like, oh, I really like those light fixtures. Yeah. Well, those are more. <laughs> These doorknobs are the ones right. I want, right. How about the fact that if, if you end up selling it like maybe 10 years down the line, maybe the person that comes in to buy it doesn't like your taste. Well, depending on how custom you go mm -hmm. and how, you know, modern or, or time sensitive you go, because if you if you build it very trendy mm -hmm. and then 10, 20 years from now, we're in a different trend, right. you know. Things change. Right. I was, I was joking when I came in, I talked to the owner, I said, is this the dance floor? Yes. This area is a dance floor, right? <laughs> yes. Also a great room in the foyer and, you know, in these open spaces, you can do anything you want. We're, we're in Poland slash New Middletown, right on Evans Lake. It's it's behind us. And um, it's, it has so many unique things. Some of the steps are crazy curved out like an arc. Uh, you're next to like a, a bar area when you first walk in. Well, again, if you were entertaining and you were doing a holiday party here or something, then, then yeah. you've got the bar, you've got the open area, you're seeing your guests in each area of the house, yeah. put on the surround sound and you've right. got a party. It's got speakers everywhere. It's got a really, you can see the, the half a spiral staircase behind me and the, mm -hmm. and the really cool patio out back. And I think it's a great price. It is, and a great location. I mean, you kind of feel like you're out of things, but you're just minutes away from the hustle and bustle and the freeways and everything else. Yeah, pretty simple. And, and to get a hold of you guys, is it okay to do this during the holidays? Do people put their, uh, their houses up during the holidays? Is that a good time because people are off? You know what? There's usually less inventory on the market, but that means if you're a seller and you need to sell now, less mm -hmm. competition. And the buyers are still buying. Interest rates are low. The market's great. Awesome. Okay, if people want to see pictures of this place, just to kind of check it out, and I recommend it, how do they do it? Give them the website and how to get a hold of you folks. They're going to take a look at kellysoldit.com, and this property is 9780 Springfield Road. Mm -hmm. And you can call or text us at 330-717-2689. They are the experts. Check out this place uh, here in Poland, that's for sure. That's another edition of Home Advantage. Oh, and it's a gorgeous house, Lauren. You got to see it for yourself. But just look at the pictures online. It's really, really cool. All right, we'll send it over to you. Well, Mike, that was quite the spectacular home. We can all keep dreaming, can't we? I guess that's what the holiday season is all about. All right, one of my favorite things ever to eat growing up was when my mom made Hungarian goulash. And the great news for me and for everybody at home is that Mitch and Helga have a look at a goulash recipe that I'm pretty sure anybody can handle. And when I used to eat it as a kid, the fact that my little girl will eat it now you should be paying close attention because it's a great way to mix up what we normally call beef stew. Hi, I'm Helga. And I'm Mitch. Welcome to Home Plate Home Style. And what are we cooking today? Look at what I have. Guess what? Goulash? Goulash, yes. We're doing a little German goulash today. And what we're going to do first is uh, salt and pepper. In the meantime, you can go dice my onions. How's that? What kind of meat are you using? Okay, this is actually, you use chuck. Okay. Okay. But this is a it's a nice cut of meat. So um, let's just That's wash nice. my oh, hands. Yeah. Okay. Always wash your hands. A little <laughs> black pepper. <laughs> black pepper. And you just want it diced up like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then right. we're using uh, salt. And don't be too stingy with it. You have a lot of meat there. And of course, I'm just going to kind of go like this. And in the pot, we're going to have 
I, I like Crisco, but you can go use any, any shortening you like. Whoops, see there. Any shortening you like. I'm at the end of the pot, but that's all I need. I don't know, Crisco is just such a nice vegetable uh, shortening. So, and we're just gonna dump that meat in there. Have your pan nice and hot that you're gonna get it nice and brown right away. And then we're gonna add the onions after a while. We got about a pound and a half to two pounds of uh, meat. Put a little bit more pepper on there. A little stingy with the pepper over here. Okay. Here we go. And of course you're gonna let this all brown real nice. But it's okay, you can go and add to your onions already also if you want to throw them in. And always, that's how my mom does it. Two pounds of beef, two pounds of onions. Always do the same. Oh, equal amounts. Equal amount of onions, yes. Because that makes a real nice flavor. You want those onions and they're healthy for you. And this is a very traditional dish, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. So, Mitch, look at this now, okay? It's coming along Doesn't well. that come nice? Yeah, I mean, I would like to have it a little browner, but you, you know, we're gonna onions? have to hurry it along. And you wanna go and put the... Uh, the sprinkle all yeah, over? Yeah, this is paprika. It's about uh, a teaspoon. All right. And you know what, this really gives it a nice color also. And then we're gonna de deglaze our... So you'll need yeah, your wine. About a quarter cup or to a half a cup, something like you that. Want me to do it by eye, or do you no, want to you can just No, you can just okay. eyeball right. it. You yeah. ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that smells delicious. Okay, that's, that's good. That's about good? That's wonderful. I get heavy-handed with the wine do sometimes. Do you? Do yeah. you? Now, see, I have oh, my, my goulash oh, shirt yeah, on. Oh, <laughs> my goulash shirt on. That's smart. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little messy. See, cook. that's coming in nice. That's Doesn't a nice see? color. Look, look how nice, yeah. See, now you get that nice brown. On the red and, and the we're going to take a half a bouillon. This Just is the a whole thing beef in there bouillon like cube, yeah. Okay. It's actually from a, it's actually like like a small, two small ones, okay? This is, a, I only had that large one at home. So it's two of the small cubes put yeah, together? Yeah, two small cubes together. And we add two cups of water. All righty. Yeah. because that's going to cook down and you want to have a little gravy because you're going to serve it over potatoes or spetzels so here we go and now we're going to put the lid on and it's ready to go for an hour and then we should have a nice goulash i'm thicken up nicely yeah it's going to thicken up with a little bit of flour that looks okay nice. after a while okay i'm looking forward to it yes that's okay mitch we cooked this now for a whole hour okay now look at this doesn't oh, that smell, smell delicious? Smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. And now what we're gonna do is you're gonna go make a little um, like a, it's actually a like bit? a roux, but it's you know it's, it's like a paste out of flour, a little more flour. Okay, now make it nice. We don't need no lumps, you know. <laughs> no lumps, huh? <laughs> okay, that should be okay. Put a little bit more water in there. Yeah, I think so. And then we're gonna go put it right in here. To, you know, you want to have this to stick to your potatoes or to your spetzels. So you got to go right in here. Okay, just not the nap, 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 nap. Yeah. Yes, All right. yes. Okay, we don't want to have it that thick. Okay. And see how, how thick it gets? Oh, yeah. We're going to use a little bit more water. Yeah. See, I was going to grab the see, wine bottle. Uh-huh, because, you know, <laughs> my kids always... They, didn't, they don't eat the meat, they eat the gravy. They love yeah, yeah. the gravy. Oh, and they have all the and flavor. Of, and of course, you want to go try it. We have, we have a little spoon there. Do we have the, a spoon? Our gravy. We should have a spoon here someplace. And um, there we go. There and we see go. if it needs a little bit of my favorite seasoning. Just a little bit. Oh, it's already tasting mm. wonderful. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that should be it, and we're going to be serving that. You should taste it too, though. It might need a little salt. Salt? Yeah, I, that's, that's we can... what I always, you know, kind of, on the end, you kind of... Okay, we don't want to over-salt it. Wonderful. Mm. 
It's oh, hell so God, good. you did so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. I'm sorry. You're telling the truth. <laughs> that is delicious. Okay, Mitch, now we have it all done. That's now, great. Now, doesn't it look nice? And I made my homemade special. That is nice. Okay, and uh, you can find this recipe one of these days. Can we hold this? Yes, you're going to hold this. And I made whole monthly. We're going to do this. So, a little bit of gravy and a little bit of meat. Yeah, so we'll be sharing the spetzel recipe in the You future. know what, this is, we, we eat off of one plate oh, because that... we are one family, don't we? <laughs> you can smell the wine. I know. What that's, kind of wine did you use? Merlot. Merlot? <laughs> So, you, so you want to taste it? Okay, you see how the meat is. I love my spetzels. Mm, I can't mm. resist the spetzel mm. either. Mm. The meat's nice and tender. Isn't oh, the it, flavor isn't is amazing. Good? I know. This, you go, go for the chuck, okay, when you're going to go for meat. Mm. Yeah, it's very, really, very really nice. And how did you, did, how did, you taste my the did you taste the spetzel? Oh, yeah, that hint of nutmeg in there. You put nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very good. Very nice. So, Oh yeah, this is... I think we're going to finish up that we can go finish the plate. Mm. <laughs> this is Helga. And I'm, I'm Mitch, always with my mouth full. <laughs> Sorry. That, that is all for today. This is excellent. Goodbye. Oh, I can smell it from here. Mitch and Helga, thank you so much for being a part of our program. And if you see Helga or Mitch, especially Helga, if you see her out and about, tell her we all said hello. And uh, tell her that you saw her on Valley Spotlight. I think it will make her day. We'll be right back. Well, 72 years is a long time for anyone. Um, it used to be that you were old at 72, but not anymore. Um, you know, we're just coming into our, a new age of regrowth for Ducat, and we're very proud to have been uh, supporting the Valley and all of our customers for 72 years. It is. It's a true testament to our customers having the faith that they have had in us for 72 years. So let yourself go to Ducat. Let yourself go to Ducat. Papa Canzanetta's Peppers, recipe established in 1975. A family secret is now yours to share with the people who add spice to your life. Choose from mild and hot versions, plus our famous original blend too. They're the perfect punch for any dish, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We've got the recipes to prove it. Just follow us on Facebook, order online at papacans.com and pick your peck. Papacans.com, order six jars or more and qualify for free shipping. We like it hot, we're glad you do too. Well, welcome back. And before we say goodbye on this very special edition of Valley Spotlight, we want to say thank you to everybody who has been supporting us and all the great stories and the people who continuously invite us into their homes each and every week. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We hope you are staying home and happy and healthy in such a weird year. We're just keeping our fingers crossed that 2021 is a little bit easier. We all know that the Easy Street production, that entire family, well, they haven't been able to do any of their performances, any of their outreach for kids. And don't worry, we've got a special performance, but first, Mike has a look at how you can watch Valley Spotlight and our retro commercials. Well, that's our show for this week. I hope you enjoyed Valley Spotlight. Um, before we go, though, we have a special treat. Uh, everybody knows about Easy Street Productions and their big Christmas special, and I'm sure many of you have seen it. You can't really watch it this year in person, but you can watch it on TV, which is really cool, on 21 WFMJ. So we have a little snippet of that. And our retro commercial this week was a, a toy that we actually got, my brother and I got, when uh, we were little. There were two or three electronic toys that we got. Simon, which my kids have today. The Speak and Spell, which was cool. Uh, electronic Quarterback from Coleco, remember that one? And then Merlin, which could do a lot of cool things, but we always thought it was most fun to play tic-tac-toe. So, uh, your retro commercial after this from Easy Street Productions. Have a good week, everybody. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. 
a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Marshall, we want to remind you that you can text to donate to help our friends at Easy Street Productions. And you can also log on to their website. Uh, the entire broadcast, an hour long, is going to be streamed on their website. So please keep that in mind. As always, thank you for watching Valley Spotlight. Merlin's a game that you can play. You can play it six different ways. Some like to play at tic-tac-toe. Others can test their skill. Some play a tune on Music Machine or try to play Blackjack 13. Merlin is six electronic games in one. It's really fun for most everyone in the family. Six pin light batteries not included. With lights and sounds. Six games in one. Merlin's a game that's lots of fun. Merlin, six electronic games in one. From Parker Brothers. It's some time in the future. The ultimate challenge. Crossfire. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.